now we come to what we call our Jedi mind trick. So an accusations audit is the thing that reaches in someone's brain and flips a switch. So what you're doing with an audit is you are proactively addressing all the negative emotions because people come to every difficult conversation and every negotiation with emotions because we are inherently emotional. That's what human beings are. And you can say you're not feeling emotion about something, but you do. You can't stop that emotion from being involved. So when you're using an accusation audit, you are taking every negative thing that the other side can possibly be thinking about you and you are mitigating it. You're putting it out there first. The thing about it is, it doesn't matter if it's true. It doesn't matter if it's fair or unfair to you. It's what they could possibly be thinking. It's not your perception of the situation. It's your basically hypothesis of what the other side is thinking. So if you remember, you know, high school, you did lab sciences and you were forced to come up with a hypothesis and then you had to prove it wrong or not. So this is what we're doing with an accusations audit. We're coming up with a hypothesis of this, all the negative things they could be thinking on their side. We're putting them in our accusation audit form. You may, you might, you probably, and we're putting them out there first. So this also is going to address anything that you may want to deny. So if someone was walking down the street and they were, they were talking negative about you and expressing all their, their negative feelings about you, what would they be saying? Those are things that you probably want to deny. Those are things you need to address. What an accusations audit does is it helps you point out the elephant in the room before it completely destroys your conversation. Because if you leave it there, everybody knows it's there. No one's pointing it out. It's trampling all over everything. Because until you mitigate whatever that emotion is, it's going to stay in that person's mind. And if that emotion stays in their mind, they can't have an open head to listen to what you have to say. A lot of people are really uncomfortable with these things because it's like taking a big old spotlight and shining it right on yourself and putting all of your negative stuff out there, airing your dirty laundry, throwing yourself under the bus, all those different things I've been used to, have been used to describe what an accusations audit does. But seriously, what you're doing is you're taking away permission from the other side to use things again against you. So it's going to recognize the negatives the other side is thinking, and it's going to prevent them from using it against you later. It's going to clear the mind of the other side because you've now demonstrated that you understand all the negative things they're bringing to the table. And they're going to be shocked because who comes to the table and starts talking negative things about themselves? The thing is, you're not going to introduce that negative thing if they don't already feel that way. It's not like you're going to say, um, oh gosh, I didn't thought about that, but now you know what? I feel negative about that. That's not what's going to happen. You cannot introduce a negative. They either feel it or they don't. And by pointing it out, you're mitigating it, okay? It's going to build trust quickly because you're, you're throwing yourself under the bus. You're essentially telling them all the negative qualities here and you're being open and honest about it. So it builds trust really, really quickly. It also helps set the expectations of the other side. Because when you use an accusation audit, whatever you're saying, if you're saying, you may feel like we're too expensive. When you say that, their mind goes to worst case scenario. If they were hoping to get a certain price and you say that, they're going, oh my gosh, this is going to be way too high for us. So they were thinking, okay, well, you know, we want to stick around 100 to 150,000. And when they hear that, they go, oh my gosh, they're going to be asking for half a million dollars. Fear sets in because fear drives behavior and drives emotions. So when you say you're going to find this too expensive, they go, oh my God, it's going to be a half a million dollars. So you, you get through all your audits. And when it comes time to make your pitch or your ask, because you don't explain these at the time that you say them, when it comes time for you to make your pitch or your ask, the dollar amount that comes out of your mouth is $200,000. They feel relieved. Even though it's higher than what they wanted to pay, you set their expectation for it to be so much higher that when you say a higher number than what they even want, they say, gosh, you're going to go up to 500000 but it's only 200. We can deal with that. Even though it's higher than what you wanted to do, it could have been so much higher. So you're setting those expectations. Um, one of the things I like to use to explain this, I worked sex crimes for the last 11 or 12 years of my career, and we were having trouble getting prosecutions of cases because people didn't 
like our victims. Um, Quite frankly, rape is a crime that people don't like to convict on because in, in a way it makes them admit that the boogeyman is out there and that this could happen to them, but it could happen to anybody. So they don't like to convict. They like to find a reason not to convict because then it makes them feel safer. So when you're going into court and you have a victim that you know got drunk and then went home with a guy that she really didn't even know and then this awful thing happens to her, the jury uses that as an excuse not to convict because it's her fault. Victim blaming is still alive and well in the United States, I promise you. But the one way we went forward and started winning some of these cases was in the opening arguments, all the prosecuting attorney talked about was, you are not going to like this victim. You are going to believe that this assault was her fault. You're going to wonder, why did she get drunk and go home with this guy? All those negative things. And the jury is sitting there going, oh my gosh. She's pointing out all these negative things. And the defense attorney is over there going, holy crap, they're ruining our case. Because all of the negative things are being introduced by the prosecution, meaning the defense can't come back later and use it against them because the wind has already been taken out of their sails. Everything is already out there now. So they can't use it against them later because the prosecution is not trying to hide it. They're literally putting it right out there. So if you're going into a difficult conversation or a negotiation, you are attempting to hide things on your side that the other side is probably already going to think don't do it. Put it out there. This is one of the hardest skills to use because it's really hard for people to, to put all their negative junk out in front of people. It, it, it doesn't feel right. It feels counterproductive. It feels awful. It feels icky. But once you learn how to do it and make it work for you, you'll wonder how you live without it because you're mitigating all the negative. Okay. So why these things? Because it demonstrates self-awareness on your part by the fact that you are aware of all these negative things the other side is feeling. So it lets them know that, that you are aware of yourself enough to know that these negative things are in their mind. And a lot of people can't do that, won't do that. It also gives you freedom to say whatever you want without any kind of a fear of a negative reaction. Because if you say to someone, when you're delivering bad news, because that's one of the times when you use this, you're going to be really upset with me. You're going to wonder how in the world you decided to do business with me in the first place. And then you pause, hang your head for dramatic effect. And then you look up and you say, we're not going to have those deliver, deliver there's a word I can't say. We're not going to have those deliverables you need until a week past the deadline. Once again, you've set expectations by telling them how awful they're going to feel and how mad they're going to be. And so they're thinking, what is going on? And then a one week deadline really seems less than what they were thinking in their head because you sent them the worst case scenario. Not to mention you just threw yourself under the bus and said how mad they were going to be and how horrible you are. And you shouldn't have done this this way and whatever else you need to say. And then they feel sorry for you because you've just bashed yourself. So they're not going to add to that. This is also a great way to get rid of those things that people might have that are preconceived against you. Um, if they think you may be too assertive, if they think that you may be too emotional, you can label this with an accusation audit at the very beginning. You may think that I'm gonna come across very harsh. You may feel like I'm being very emotional about this and you mitigate those things because when you say that, it takes it out of their head. If they were thinking it, it gets rid of it because you've already acknowledged it, okay? So this is really important too, because a lot of times, depending on who you're dealing with, if you've got a, a cutthroat procurement person on the other side of the table from you and you know, you're, you're trying to deal with them, they're automatically gonna think they have this woman on the phone who they can walk all over, who is gonna be really, really emotional and they don't really wanna deal with this. And so if you put that out there, they're gonna go, hmm, okay. And they're gonna kind of wonder, okay, well, maybe I was wrong about this person. So you can actually subvert all those negative things they may be thinking about you to start with. This also softens the conversation. So especially when you're delivering bad news, um, the, the example I use in all the basic classes is if someone from your house, your spouse calls you and says, hey, you know, I need to stop by and pick up this, this, and this on the way home. I need, you know, for dinner tonight. And you forget it. And you pull into the driveway and you go, oh, geez, I forgot to go by the store and get this, this, and this. So when you go in the house and you say, you're going to be so mad at me, you're going to think I'm so irresponsible. You're just going to think that I don't care what you're doing here at home. 
And then you hang your head, once again, dramatic effect. And you say, I forgot to pick up the milk. And then you have bashed yourself so hard that they're going to feel bad bashing you on top of that. And they're going to say, oh, it's okay. Even though it's probably not okay. You didn't come in and say, I forgot the milk. And basically I'm not going back out and getting it. So that kind of attitude is going to cause a fight. But if you come in and say, I'm so horrible, I'm so terrible, I did this. And then they're going to go, oh, it's okay. I promise you try it. It's amazing that it works. And people all the time that I coach privately, they will say, I can't believe that worked. You told me this was going to work. I went and did it. And oh my God, it worked. It does. Accusations audits are amazing. Okay. Davey, Barbara, anything you want to add to that? Um, no, she's right. I, I, I use it to ask if you want to go out to dinner. And I know I can ask any time, but I want it to practice. And when you when you start off with, uh, you're going to think I'm crazy. You're going to think that I, I just don't even know what I'm talking about. And by the time I got to the ass, he's looking at me like, what is wrong with you? Was, Do you want to go to dinner? Sure, let's go. He's relieved <laughs> because he thought I was going to say something or start an argument. He's relieved that it was only I want to go to dinner. So it, it helps to get those practice, uh, what we call low stake pra practice in with your family. Mm -hmm. So it, it really does help, especially with the skill that's awkward to use in the first place. Yes, this is awkward to use. Davey, did you want to add anything to that? I think that's great. Awesome. Any chat things we need to deal with before we move on to Davey's favorite? Um, no, <laughs> no, um, I'm, I'm just um, going to give a little bit more info on how to use an email, but in the chat, um, okay. and actually the only thing that I will say to accusations audits um, is it, it really helps with that whole um, kind of what we were, or what got brought up earlier, um, just in the chat of, okay, how are we going to still be firm, but tactful? Right. Essentially that it's like, we're always walking this line as women of, okay, how can we make sure that people listen to us and, um, and that we're not getting walked all over, but, um, that, you know, we're not going to get labeled. Is it okay to that? We're not going to get labeled a bitch. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a fine line that we're walking. Um, accusations audit is magic for that. Absolute magic. And this is coming from someone who I am scared of disappointing people <laughs> deeply. Um, and so, you know, I talk a big talk, but then actually at the end of the day, I, I don't ever want to upset people. Um, and this has been just a game changer for me. So instead of feeling scared of, you know, like I have to deliver bad news to someone, someone's going to be mad that this is happening. Um, the accusations audit just helps you with all of that because you're just able to express, I understand what this, what the impact is and what that's going to be for you. You set them up for it. Um, and then suddenly you're not having to walk this fine line anymore. You're creating a lot more space for yourself, um, to be able to deliver the bad news that you have to deliver, right? It's not up to you. Um, and so anyway, I just think the accusations audit is magical. It gives you so much more space as a woman than what you feel like you have a lot of times. Yeah, it does. It is one of those skills that makes you feel very, very powerful because you are setting expectations on the other side and you are kind of disarming them by pointing out all the negative things that then they can't use against you later. So it, it is one of the best skills actually for women. I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Rocco. Uh, my question is, um, can you just give some examples? Uh, I work in, in, uh, in the banking industry. So can you use some examples of how these techniques would work in a situation where um, you're trying to convince somebody to bring more money or invest more money or, okay. um, or uh, part with their resources? <laughs> part with their resources. Um, an accusation audit is going to be amazing for you. So mm -hmm. think about all the negative reasons why they wouldn't want to invest more, all the negative reasons why they might be afraid to invest more because fear of loss is something that has to be gotten over before they can see opportunity, mm -hmm. okay? So what are people afraid to lose when they're bringing you money to invest? Mm -hmm. The money. <laughs> so, right, the money. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so you need to think about all the negative things that can be. Um, you may feel like this is high risk. 
-hmm. You may feel as if you won't get enough return on this. And remember, when you use an accusations audit, you're not explaining it at the time that you're using it. You're just putting it out there to mitigate it. Yeah. Think about the court, the court example. We didn't explain any of those things. We just threw all that negative out there. And then when it comes time to actually do the case and put on their side of the case, that's when they're explaining things. So when you're talking to someone, start out at the very beginning with accusations audits, letting them know you understand all the negative things you're thinking about when it comes to bringing you money. Okay. Okay. And then okay. don't explain why they don't have to worry about that. Just say that. And then when you start talking with them about options and things that they can do, that's when you're going to explain the audits away so that they feel more comfortable because you can't get there with them. Anything logical you're talking about until you mitigate that negative. And by acknowledging it, you're mitigating it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll, um, if I can just add something real quick to that Absolutely. is the, um, yeah, parting with their resources. That's, um, <laughs> that's a tough thing to do, right? So, um, what you really want to build is the trust. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, they're not going to do that if they don't trust you. Mm -hmm. And um, people say there's a lot of different theories out there of how you can build trust quickly and how you can build rapport. Mm -hmm. Just nothing is going to be as valuable as them feeling understood by you. Mm -hmm. Because I'm sure that, I mean, this is probably part of the accusations audit too, right? That, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that I'm just one of the, one of the hundreds of people out here asking for your money. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we're going to get more personal, like I'm sure that it feels really uh, strange to be reached out to all the time mm -hmm. for money in this way, you know, and that it can feel really impersonal mm -hmm. and, um, even maybe jarring, right? Like that you can use you can use things like that, right? Of, okay, how do I actually think they're feeling and what they're experiencing? And then once, if you can get, cause I'm sure a lot of it is trying to get in front of them in the first place. Yeah. But once you can get in front of them, truly the labels mirror summary is just a magic combination because once they're speaking enough to you, and if you're able to summarize, I mean, even something along those lines, right. Mm -hmm. That it's like, you've worked so hard for your money. Um, you don't want to just throw it away. Mm -hmm. You want to put it somewhere valuable. And that's a really difficult task to figure out who is going to take care of that for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Like being able to express something like that, I mean, would just build trust in a really magical way. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's a great totally. question. It was a great question. <laughs>